Um, good morning. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. I'm Brad Hart, and I'm the current board chair for United Way of East Central Iowa. We're here today, you're here today, to help us recognize and honor the outstanding service of many community volunteers. They certainly deserve to be recogni recognized and honored, and, uh, but I know many of you just got your, your meals, so please continue to eat. We just want to get the program started. Um, I want to start by um, thanking our sponsors for this event. Our first presenting sponsor is Rockwell Collins, and they're sponsoring the Adult Senior Group and Business Awards. The other presenting sponsor is Transamerica, who is sponsoring the Youth Award. Please join me in thanking these terrific sponsors. As many of you know, April is National Volunteer Month, so it's really the perfect time to have an event like this to celebrate the wonderful work of so many community volunteers. Um, I often tell people that Cedar Rapids and the Corridor are very unique in large part due to the efforts of volunteers. All of the, the nonprofits in the Corridor, and there are hundreds of them, depend on, rely on the work of volunteers to help them fill their mission. And almost every important community project that's happened in the last 10 or 20 years has been developed and or led by volunteers. It's been remarkable. There's just really something about volunteering that in my experience, nothing else can match. When you have a chance to work for something you really believe in, and then you work with others, who share your passion for the cause or the mission, it's really an incredible experience and a lot of fun. Volunteering gives you a chance to learn new skills, make new friends, and connect with your community in a very meaningful way. Now, many, if not all of you, are already volunteering, and that's, that's wonderful. Thank you for that. I do have another challenge for you, though. Uh, 2014 is United Way's 100th year of service for this community. 100 years. And so we're inviting individuals to join our Centennial Volunteer Club. That club, each of the members of the club um, commits to volunteer at least 100 hours in calendar year 2014. I think there are some members of the Centennial Volunteer Club in the audience today. If you've already joined the club, would you please raise your hand? Thank you very much. You know, it's really easy to join the Centennial Volunteer Club. We happen to have sign-up sheets at your tables, so you can, you can join today. Uh, you can also go on, on, online to the United Way of East Central Iowa website, and there's a very easy registration process there. Um, I hope you'll consider joining us. We already have 120 members of the club. It's going to be fun to see the impact that we can make, that this club can make with this additional effort. And now I'd like to introduce Rob Lofskar from Wells Fargo Bank, who wants to talk to us about a new initiative that he's really excited about. Rob. Thanks, Rob. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Are we all awake now? Okay. Pardon my nerves here. Um, you know, it's a little intimidating when you look up to so many people in this crowd um, that, you know, I model a lot of my volunteering activities to a lot of people here, so I apologize. I probably made a mistake of paying too much attention to the people that were here, so now I'm a little nervous. And on top of it, I apologize for going off of my notes because once you see my Mediacom News Leaders video, you'll understand why I'm going off the script. So. With that being said, if I told you United Way could provide you the opportunity to create an avenue in which your company would accomplish increased employee engagement, increased employee loyalty, increased self-worth among your employees, and more importantly, improve your community you serve and help those in need, would that be something you'd be interested in? Raise your hand if you're interested in it. All right. This could be accomplished by having a volunteer program in your own workplace. 
I was fortunate to be part of a group of 10 people who started a workplace volunteer program at Wells Fargo. Since then, we have witnessed the following. Increased team members' participation in volunteerism by 75%. Increased the number of logged volunteer hours by 300% over the last three years. We will eclipse 2,500 hours in 2014. Keep in mind, that's just logged hours, okay? There's many volunteers that are too busy to even go out to our website and log their hours. Our first year, we had two dozen events, including our participation in the United Way of Day Caring for the first time in eight years. In our third year, last year, we had over 100 events in which employees volunteered at. Employees from all levels in the bank take on leadership roles by organizing volunteer events due to their passion for a cause. Increased United Way and other nonprofit charitable giving and unbelievable pride amongst our team members because of the impact on our community they witnessed. This can be your experience at your company as well, and you don't have to create it on your own. Representatives from Alliant, I'm on Communications, Rockwell Collins, Van Meter, and Wells Fargo, along with the United Way of East Central Iowa, have been working together on talking about ways to grow volunteerism and engage more companies on the development of a workplace volunteer program. To do this, we have created a United Way, excuse me, to do this, we have created at United Way a Workplace Volunteer Council. This council will bring like-minded companies together to share ideas, resources, and best practices on how to engage employees in volunteering in our community. The Workplace Volunteer Council is interested in building a stronger community where companies collaborate to promote and foster a culture of employee volunteerism. We will meet quarterly to provide a platform for companies to share ideas and best practices in developing employee volunteer programs. The meetings will also include time to hear from local nonprofits in United Way about critical community needs and how volunteers can help meet these needs. There will be opportunities throughout the year to collaborate with other businesses and work side by side on volunteer projects. The Workplace Volunteer Council encourages companies of all sizes to join to learn about how to establish an employee volunteer program. And I want to emphasize that. You do not have to be the size of Wells Fargo to do this. Um, this is something we do in our larger metropolitan markets. Um, and so we actually started this on our own because we wanted to um, basically spread the news and of everything that was going on within our company. So people like myself will be at these meetings um, so that you don't have to make the same mistakes we did. Um, so we're really looking for all sorts of sizes of companies. If you have your own program, we're looking for you to join because we need to know what you guys went through as well. So we will hold our first meeting on June 3rd at noon at United Way of East Central Iowa. Please stop by on your way out to ask for questions. We're gonna have a table right out there. So I would be not a very good representative of United Way if I did not recognize a couple people that did a whole lot of work and just because I drew the short straw, I'm standing up here. <laughs> so, with that being said, Leah Rodenberg from Alliant Energy, will you please stand? <laughs> it is the truth that I did draw the short straw. Leah is truly our fearless leader um, with our strategic planning committee. And I just want to thank Leah for everything she has done. Sue Driscoll, back there in the corner. Please give her a round of applause. She has done an unbelievable amount of work. She's been very patient for emails that I don't return after three days and then emails me again. She's partnered with Leah and we're very excited about this program that all of us have put together. So thank you very much for your time. And so with that being said, I would like to introduce Trace Pickering and Kate Beal, co-chairs of the Courtney Society. So we have a lot of exciting volunteer related things happening in our own community today and we're happy to be here to celebrate it. That's right. Uh, before we get started, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the process and, and how it all worked. Uh, we're going to be awarding five outstanding volunteer awards today. But in February, we asked the community to submit uh, applications for and recognize volunteers throughout the community that they felt deserved uh, that recognition. We received 42 nominations uh, for that for those awards, and then in uh, March the community had the opportunity to vote on today's five, five.
finalists. Uh, but what we'd like to do at this point in time is to recognize all the 42 nominees, and I'd like you all to stand up if you were one of those 42 nominees to be recognized. Please. were absolutely outstanding and it was an honor and a joy to get to read about them as part of the, the committee and be part of that selection process. Um, the court and committee actually selected the three finalists in each category and then the public voted through a poll on the United Way's website to determine the winners. This year we had over 7,200 votes that were counted, which is awesome. Um, and we would ask that the nominees would stand when we say your name and then the winners can come up on stage to accept their awards and say a few words. So on to the nominees. Uh, the Youth Award is sponsored by Transamerica's Tomorrow Makers. The nominees for Outstanding Youth Volunteers are... Sage Collins Wright and her work with Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Katie Hamilton and her work with Leader Dogs for the Blind. Mackenzie Jordan and her work with the Linmar School District. Hey, this is very exciting. I feel like this is my Oscar moment. <laughs> like, oh. And the winner is Katie Hamilton. Katie trained Daisy from weeks old to 10 months. She was responsible for teaching obedience and introducing Daisy to social experiences and places. The impact she had with Leader Dogs for the Blind changed one woman's life beyond words. Because of Katie's work, Daisy passed the testing for leader dogs with flying colors and was placed with the human partner, Melody. It was important to Katie that leader dogs are placed with humans at no cost to sight impaired persons. Katie. Hi guys, I would like to thank you for giving me this honor. I'd like to throw out a special thanks to Kathy Wakoff for nominating me for this award and being such an awesome key club adult person. <laughs> I'd also like to thank my parents and family for letting me spend so much time volunteering. Thank you guys for awarding me this. Huber, and this is Chris Next Era, Next Era, <laughs> and we are court members. Also, the next category today is for Outstanding Adult Volunteer. This award is also sponsored by Rockwell Collins. The nominees are Cindy Becker and her work with supporting Jackson Elementary. Lynette Bowman and her work with Camp Courageous. <laughs> Heather Kime and her work in Iowa County. <laughs> and the winner is Heather Kime. Last summer, Heather successfully rallied contractors and local volunteers to donate their time and supplies to get the city pool up to code so that it could be opened. The children in the community would not have been without this valuable source of recreation if it were not for her initiative and hard work. 
She is an inspiration to others, and her giving nature is contagious. She is always ready to help organizations with their fundraisers and always volunteers for the sake of the betterment of the community. Thank you everybody for voting for me. Um, I don't like to talk in front of people, so I'm very nervous, but thank you so much. And I'd like to thank Sharon Carney for nominating me and Kenna for talking. Thanks. The next category is for Outstanding Senior. This award is also sponsored by Rockwell Collins. The finalists are Steve Alsop in his work with Block by Block. <laughs> Janet Holtman in her work with Quarter Therapy Dogs. <laughs> Deb Winter in her work with Women Build for Cedar Valley Habitat for Humanity. And the winner is Janet Holtman. <laughs> Janet tirelessly works for Corridor Therapy Dogs, arranging visits to libraries, hospices, schools, and special needs schools. The group featured in the children's book, Danny Strikes Out in America, which was used in the Colonel's reading program which was read in over 55 schools, therefore helping literacy. She tirelessly recruits new members and does great things for the city of Cedar Rapids. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is such an honor just to be here today with all these great volunteers. I can't believe one today. You know, it's all about the dogs with, with my work. I, I don't really have to do much at all. We have these wonderful dogs in our organization, and the, the handlers, the owners are, are amazing. And the things we do, the rewards we get are just the smiles and um, the joy that these dogs give to people. And I have to tell you that um, we have one member uh, in the UK who's inspired me and kept me going all these three years, and Tony Nevitt nominated me, and I thank him for that. He's, he's very special. <laughs> so thank you so much. What a great group of individuals we have in our community. We also have some great groups that work together to help out. The next category today is Outstanding Group Volunteer. This award is sponsored by Rockwell Collins. And the nominees are? Chrome Divas and their work at Waypoint. Unity. Unity Point Hospice Bereavement Volunteers and their work with grieving families. <laughs> Rap Builders and their work with wheelchair ramp accessibility programs. And <laughs> And the winner is Rap Builders. RAP Wheelchair Ramp Builders serve our community by building safe, affordable ramps. These volunteers provide construction skills and design experience to help individuals facing the physical challenge of entering their homes via steps. <laughs> In 2013, builders completed 25 wooden ramps and removed another 10 ramps for material reuse. Volunteers gave over 1,900 hours last year to build and repair ramps, allowing seniors and other individuals the freedom and ability to stay in their homes. They also celebrated 100 builds. Congratulations.
story, so congratulations. <laughs> Angie, who really keeps us all together, which is very hard. <laughs> wow. Plus, well, thank friends, you. Uh, Coco and uh, Donuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I find my volunteers um, work for cookies, so that's good news. <laughs> Oh, um, on behalf of these awesome volunteers, I want to say thank you um, to the nominating committee and to all of the voters. Um, this is such an honor considering the room that we're in and the uh, amazing volunteers that, that are here and that are in our community. Um, I find this is probably the most reluctant group of volunteers I've ever, um, I've ever met to be recognized. So uh, that's why I'm standing up here and none of them are talking. <laughs> but um, on behalf of this group, thank you very much. Um, this is such an honor and we really appreciate it. So our final category today is Outstanding Business Volunteer. And this award is sponsored by Rockwell Collins. The nominees are? Geonetric and their work with Operation Overnight. Van Meter and their work with various organizations in our community. Wells Fargo and their various work in our community with organizations. And the winner is Geonetric. In 2012, Geonetric established Operation Overnight and set out to help one nonprofit build a new website. They narrowed the applications down to four and couldn't decide, so they did all four. In 2013, they had over 80% of employees volunteer, and they built five sites, including Catherine McCauley Center, Gems of Hope Cancer, really sucks, <laughs> uh, Mission of Hope, 365 Ride, Youth Port, Jane Boyd Community House, Oak Hill Cemetery Association, Science Center, and Wheelchair Ramp Accessibility Program. It's an awesome service, congratulations. Good morning, everyone, and I'm Anne. Um, I have the pleasure of being the chair of the Operation Overnight Committee. Um, first of all, I want to thank Heather for nominating us. Um, it is an honor to be in this room with all of you who do such great service for our community. What an awesome community to be in and to serve. Um, another big thank you to the people in the blue and black shirt sitting at that table um, and to the people at Geonetric. Uh, this is a labor of love for us. We had no idea when we started planning Operation Overnight for the first time how blessed we would be by it. Um, and that's true. The biggest reward for us has been all of you that we've gotten to know. You're part of our family now. Um, and I'm going to put in a shameless plug. If you know of a nonprofit that would like to apply for Operation Overnight 2014, the application opens um, March, uh, sorry, it's March already, May 15th. And we'd love to hear from um, other organizations that we could help give a web presence to. And you'll continue to bless us. And we hope that we've blessed those of you in the community that, that we've helped. So thank you very much. And congratulations to all of you in the room. Wow, you knew this already, but what, what a community of amazing volunteers. It's just wonderful to have a chance to hear about them. Listening um, to them and their accomplishments reminded me of one of my favorite quotes. Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we do, we make a life by what we give. And all of you in this room are examples of that, so thank you. You know, as volunteers, we sometimes get busy. We lose track of the impact that our volunteering makes on so many people. So to hear more about how we volunteering is impacting others, I'm inviting Crystal to come up from 
Young Parents Network. Could you come up, please? Good morning. In fiscal year 2013, Young Parents Network, the agency that I worked for for the past 11 years, utilized over 4,000 hours of volunteer service, serving over 700 enrolled participants. Our largest pools of volunteers serve us on Thursday nights at our prenatal and parenting group, where each week we have nearly 30 individuals help us to serve a meal, facilitate classes for pregnant or parenting moms and dads, and care for children whose parents want nothing more than to build a better life for themselves and to build successful families. Additionally, YPN uses volunteers in our We Care Shop, which is an incentive program for participants to access basic needs items such as diapers, wipes, clothing, toys, and books. We also have special events that occur during the year. So for example, our summer picnic or Broadway Maybes or the Now Be a Dad Big Truck event. Finally, our YPN Board of Directors and Trustees add countless hours and in input to, to support and assist our agency to become one of the best and most notable in early childhood education in the community. To put it bluntly, YPN could not achieve the results that we do without the assistance of volunteers. It is an honor to introduce the video, Miguel Burgos. He was not able to be with us today as he's currently at his job, uh, but Miguel first came to YPN four years ago as a participant in one of our programs. Miguel flourished in the dad's program by adding valuable insight to conversations, assisting Spanish speaking dads with translation services, and even had time to form a bond with Jim Brown, our current dad's facilitator, who was nominated this year as well. This bond has been extended to that of a peer relationship now, as Miguel has accepted the position of volunteer facilitator for our Hispanic dad's program at YPN. He has truly come full circle from volunteer, excuse me, from participant to volunteer. Here is Miguel's story. My name is Miguel Burgos. I was born in Mexico City. I've lived in Iowa since I was 13. I uh, attended Washington High School here in town, Kirkwood, and then Mount Mercy. I have uh, two daughters, Alicia, who is three years old, and uh, Xochitl, she's 10 months old, and my wife, Rocio. Uh, what brought me to YPN was uh, the fact that uh, we're going to be new parents during the pregnancy. Um, they uh, taught us how to count the kicks. Um, that helped a lot towards the end of it because uh, there were some times where the baby wasn't kicking and uh, we knew how to count kicks to make sure everything was okay. Young Parents Network is a relatively small organization. We have 10 full-time staff members. We have a part-time staff member. But to support a program that serves between 80 to 100 moms, dads, and kids every week, we really need volunteers. On average, every single week, we use between 20 to 30 volunteers. We're lucky enough to, to have former participants come back and help us in a, in a volunteer capacity. Um, a more recent example of that is Miguel Burgos, who actually was one of our parenting dad's members who is bilingual, and he's actually been gracious enough to come back and lead our Hispanic dad's group. Uh, from time to time, I translate, help translate here at YPN with the other participants that speak Spanish. When I started volunteering, I was kind of hesitant about volunteering. I thought it was, you know, going to be, if I signed up, it was going to be forever. And, you know, I was kind of scared because I'm not a professional or necessarily good at anything, but it's not about, you know, being great at something. It's just about giving your time and, and having a good, positive attitude with, with the people. Um, now I volunteer, you know, over 40 hours a year. If it makes me feel great, it's just uh, involved with the community. It only requires a little bit of time, the time that you want to put into it. And it's a great experience because, uh, you know, you're helping somebody out. And I feel like I've been very blessed with, uh, you know, my family and, you know, just life in general. So why not go and give something back, you know, to somebody else who may not be as fortunate as I am. Now that I've been a participant for three years, and they have asked me to volunteer. I feel a little bit more comfortable about 
uh, you know, yes. teaching a little bit that I know, yeah. but I know that, you know, I'm not ever going to be a, a perfect parent. So more than teaching anything, I think I'm going to keep learning with them. It's important to, for me to volunteer because it feels like uh, I'm giving something back to the community. It's a way for me to play forward of uh, how blessed I feel about my family and everything I have. Thank you, Crystal. And please thank Miguel for us. Um, that's the way volunteering should work. It should come full cycle. And that, those things happen because of the work of Miguel and all of you in this room, so thank you. Um, I do want to, again, congratulate today's winners. Each of the winners will receive $500 to donate to the charity of their choice, so that's important too. Um, I also want to thank the Quartan Society members for the, doing the hard work of going through those 42 nominations and narrowing them down and helping present today, so thank you very much. Thanks to Erica and the United Way staff and crew for helping put all this together today. So thank you very much. Um, I'd also like you to um, fill out that uh, Centennial Volunteer um, form. Um, please consider it. I think you'll love it. Um, and I'm going to um, leave you with one last quote this morning. Um, Anne Frank wrote, how wonderful it is that no one need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. And you and your volunteering, you're doing just that. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again.